Uh, thanks, Pete, for, for, for doing this chat. This is fantastic. And, and coincidentally, we would have been talking to you anyway, but you've actually written a book, The Fame Factor, How to Make the Most of Your Talent. Yeah, it's a bit different as a book. It's more of a quiz book yeah, yeah. Than, a, than, a, than a how to do it. It says, how serious are you? Yes. You know. y yeah, you talk about that a lot, actually. Determination Yeah. seems to be a, a, a really yeah. key ingredient. I mean, a lot of things apart from the obvious, in, in fact, you're talking about. My, my, my belief is that one of the things that reality shows has done, it's made it look easy. Yeah. And it isn't. Yeah. And to me, it's why you see somebody win one of those shows go to number one and then you never hear from them again ever mm. um, because they've, there's no depth to their talent. The common thing that a lot of those contestants say is, I really want it, as if that's yeah. uh, enough that well, they really that's want what, it. That's what drove me mad. <laughs> I mean, what drove me mad about the whole show, um, because, I mean, what you see on television is a fraction of the time it takes you to make. Yeah. I mean, you know, you sit there, we used to sit there from 9 o'clock in the morning to late in the evening with a, a lunch hour of 45 minutes. And in that day, if you saw more than one singer, you were delighted. Yeah, yeah. And if you saw more than two funny people, you were delighted. Yeah. yeah but when you started to do the, the audition kind of shows, we, we, we'd had the Opportunity Knocks and the New Faces back in, back in the day, but we never really had this kind of... This was a new thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, what did you think you were, you, were getting, you were going to be part of? We really wanted just to go out and see what the talent was. We were fed up with sitting in London yeah. and that agents and managers and lawyers bringing us tapes. Okay. Simon and I have worked on the Australian pop stars, you know, the original series. Yes. And um, it, it was run by Nigel, you know, nasty mm. Nigel. Mm. And we, Simon and I were appalled, appalled at what television thought the record industry was. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what really the truth of this is. Right. This came about because Simon and I were so appalled at what television thought they could do with the record industry. Yeah. Um, pop Idol came out of the fact that when we saw them making pop stars and Simon and I were involved, we just went, they've got this wrong. Mm. They've got this wrong. They've got it totally wrong. Which is why, of course, we took pop stars and we turned it into Pop Idol and it became the biggest television show ever. Now, what were they getting wrong then? The one thing we did, certainly in the first series, is music was the dominating factor. It, it was not about television, mm -hmm. it was about music. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody had come up with this Jeopardy TV idea or, you know, nobody had come up with a Roman gladiatorial. Mm. This was about, you know, music to me. And, and the, I believe the first show, if you look at it, was about music. The contestants spent hours looking for songs, they picked the songs, we didn't pick the songs. It was about their version views of what music was. And television was a fly on the wall. Yeah, and yeah. To me, it worked. Yeah. But, of course, then you get the Americans involved. Yeah. And then, you know, they start writing lines for the judges. Yeah. And they start um, telling the, the cameraman what angles and then start to take out the good singers because they're not really great television. Yeah. And it became a freaking geek show. Mm. And, and that's what, of course, television wanted. Mm. They loved it. I mean, the mm. Jerry Springer show, the Oprah Winfrey, they don't want just ordinary people on there. They want people, yeah. uh, you know, that stand around the water cooler and talk. Yes. And to me, they took music out because music became second, uh, second part of the show. So, you, so you're talking about what's happened to them in, to, the, in to, the last well, few years? Well, I, yes, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. that's why after the second show, I just went, you know, this isn't, I don't want to be on this. What I do find amazing, and I do honestly find amazing, that everybody talks about fixing on television. Yeah. Blue Peter. Yeah. My God, where have they been, what have they been watching for 10 years? Yeah. You know, I, you know and I went out and told people, and, and, and people attacked me for it. Mm. You know, I highlighted the problems eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's going, oh, the old sod, he's, he's passed it now, you know, he's lost it now, he's complaining. You know, I'm sorry, it was there for everybody to see what was going on. But, but there, there, there seems to be lots of areas of, especially the X Factor in this country, where I can't believe that certain things aren't pointed out again and again and again. About even Simon Cowell's role and the fact that everything he chooses goes on his label, that he, you know, he's part of the theme tune, he gets the theme tune, he's, he, he owns the acts and he's selecting the acts and then he's pretending he's distant from the acts, but really he's part of what will eventually make the money. And nobody seems to confront it. Yes, but I don't mind that. I you think... don't mind that? No. So I why think... don't you mind that then? 
Well, because I think that's a brilliant move. Right, OK. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but I yeah. you know, I'm not going to knock Simon for doing it. I think right. he's pretty genius. OK. If he's, got, if he's got the chutzpah to do it, you know, I'm going to stand up and, <laughs> I'm going to stand up and applaud. So that, you, you think, is, is, is just good, good showmanship, in a way? Well, I just think that's great business. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not going to knock that. I, okay. I wouldn't do it. I mean, yeah. that's my problem. Yeah. I couldn't be as ruthless as Simon. Yes, yeah. yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't do that, but I'm not going to knock so, him for so it. So what were you... Because everybody knows it's the Simon Cowell show. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And he's taking a piece of everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody knows that. And, yeah. I, and I stand and applaud. OK, so what you is know? it you're talking about that, that you couldn't believe that people weren't asking you about in terms of it being a fix? Well, the show does it, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. if, if you see somebody put through, you know yeah. he's not a, a superstar. Yeah. And they go on to win a competition like that. Yeah. Don't you ask yourself, well, hang on a minute. It, I, you know, the public... Ain't buying this. No, no, I, I, but I ask myself those questions all the time, but my, my, my angle is always, you know, the cowl factor. Do you know what I mean? That it's the cowl is, 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 is the supreme manipulator. Of oh, no. You no, 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 he's not, no. The supreme manipulator at the end of the day is television. But, but, not, but cow, doesn't cowl run the show? No, no. Simon does not uh, have influence in certain areas, and, and I think that's why it works. I've got to tell you, mm -hmm. one of the reasons... I think this works so, so, so well is, this is not a one-man show. There are quite a few people in that make that show that are very influential, behind the scenes that you never see. Mm. Um, for instance, I, I, I mean, I was so naive when I did Pop Stars The Rivals, but they could work out by the voting patterns where to put somebody in the show if they wanted them out. Now, sure. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I... They knew exactly where the viewers were watching. So if the producer didn't want somebody in the show the next week, all they'd do, they'd put them around. Now, you're naive. You're thinking just there's ten people to sing mm. and, you know, they put the five, ten people on that, they've drawn them out and they've mm. said, you're third, mm. you're third. No, not at all. Yeah. They know exactly where, mm. they're, where they're going. So how have you viewed what's happened in the last few years then? Because part of you seems to be very... Uh, positive about it and passionate about it and, and part of you seems to be very cynical about it. Yeah. I'm passionate about competitions where people really do want to become artists and any opportunity that a band or artist can have is, is applaudable to me. Mm. But when television cynically thinks that it's easy and makes it look easy and yeah. cheap, yeah. I, mean, I mean, don't mean cheap as they're, they're not cheap shows at all, they're expensive, my God. I mean, the one thing these shows have done it's brought back big budget television. The public love it. Right. I, can, I can't argue about the public. Paul, you know, you and I would agree on one thing and or disagree on another thing. I have always played to the public. Yes. I've never, ever said the public, uh, yeah. you know, shouldn't get what they want. Yeah. But, but, but isn't that part of what Carol's done? He's, he's, uh, he's applied the formula of certain people, and, and you're definitely one of them in terms of, of what pop is. And he's, but he's done that internationally now. He's turned that idea of pop music into an international phenomenon. And I just wonder whether you feel, you know, um, that you've been left, as, uh, left out of that particular, you know, conquering, if you like. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, I, I, th I see there's a difference, you see, and that's probably why I walked away. I see the difference is that what I did, I'm proud of, and I stand up, and if you don't like it, that's not a problem for me, but we were one little company with four people as, you know, uh, four or five people and took on the world and won. Mm. Simon has built this amazing company with, you know, Sony's money, um, you know, ten million pound for this and ten million pound for that. You know, we did it with ten pound. Mm. So, you know, I'm not jealous of what Simon's done. The opposite, I applaud. But I have to tell you, I wouldn't want it. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. because to me, what I created is still special to me. Because it, you know, yes, people think it was about image. But we go back to the fact that we, you know, we launched Rick Astley with 55 quid. You know, we went, you know, we got top of the pops and we took him into Next and bought a suit for 55 quid. The next thing he's on top of the pops and we've sold 15 million records, you know. So we did the opposite way round. 
But do you, do you think Simon's got uh, intentions to remodel himself, thinking of his legacy as a music man? I thought the Clive Davis thing was interesting. You know, I mean, I'm, I get very paranoid about Simon's um, methods and motives, so forgive me if I can't go off. But I sometimes look at him and think, I wonder if now, because he realises that he, as, 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 as successful as he's created this kind of company and this vision, he's not going to be remembered as, as any kind of music man. Uh, and and the, the, I was wondering if there was part of him that wants to be remembered that way. Well, that's an interesting question. Simon Cowell, remember, there's a music man. Robson and Jerome, Zig and Zag. You know, I think that would always yeah. be ultimately the, <laughs> the nails for him. Yeah. Um, but I always love that face he pulls when he, you know, he looks like he's thinking about, the, you know, pretending or, or is thinking about the musical side of it, as if he wants us to think that... that you, know, he's Simon, you know, Simon's created something that none of us could have dreamt about. I mean, he's created a brand. He's created... You know, the f we're talking about him. Mm. You know, w w he is now pop, part of pop history. Nobody's ever done what Simon's done. And I guess, I see it as very different from what I did. Mm -hmm. um, he probably doesn't, but I, I believe that he has, because I believe uh, if you go out, which I do, uh, regularly and, and still listen to music, mm. I will not hear one of the X Factor artists in anywhere I go. Mm -hmm. I don't hear them on the radio. Mm -hmm. I don't hear them in the clubs. Mm. So he's almost made his own branch of music. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I don't know anybody's ever done that before. Yeah. You know, I was competing, you know, with, you know, everybody else, like Frankie Goes to Hollywood on Radio 1. He's competing with nobody because he's not on Radio 1. <laughs> you, you've known him for an awful long time, you know, way back when he was badgering yeah. you, really. So did you, what did you, did you see anything in him then that you, you, you figured he would end up himself as such a star? Oh, yeah. The one thing I said about Simon... Right from the very beginning, when I, you know, when I saw him as the disco dog at Top of the Pops, you know, any man that could, body, you know, wear a body vest with cigarettes up his shoulder on top, you know, uh, I thought this man's going places because he had absolutely the determination, and that's what Simon has got. Mm. You know, Simon believes he can walk on water, and I mean literally, he is the most amazing operator I've ever seen. Even though he's put pop music onto a, pop music onto a Saturday night, yeah. and it, it's the audience, and it seems to be that thing. In an odd sort of way, when pop music wasn't that tabloidy, it was somehow bigger and created bigger yeah. impact. You know, that's on our right. cultural. Yes, and it was, yeah. and I think that, that, that that still exists. It's slightly to the left, and you can't mm. see it at mm. the moment. But mm. you know, I believe things like Lady Gaga and that electro, uh, you know, Stock Aitken Waterman. Mm. 30 years on, mm. it's still massive. Mm. I go to the clubs, everybody goes radio rentals. I don't hear, mm. you know, Leona Lewis. Yeah. And I think that's what Simon's done, is created a complete brand over here. It's, it's, it's a weird kind of empty shell in a way. It is. Yeah. The biggest problem it's, it's created is that television will not take that format on. Mm. I mean, everybody's now shunned it. Mm. Yeah. But I like pop music. I like very mm. honest mm. people who just go... This is about a tune, this is about entertainment. I personally like boy-girl boy related songs, you know, I'm the biggest mm. puff in the world. I love it to be camp. If you're going to make it camp, it's got to be butlins, you know. And I, I have no problem with that. What I don't want is television watering it down mm. and controlling it completely. Mm. So, to me, it's still out there. Somebody mm. will do it. Mm. Pete, cheers, Thank you. Man. Thank you very much indeed.